success. I see how everybody's story, as Linda was saying a few minutes ago, were also interconnected. Something you said reminded me that I became a nurse purely because of flying to New York when the World Trade Towers were about to fall. Mm. And that has to do with immigration. And I just hurts my heart about the Syrian concern. Mm. But connecting <clears throat> national and international terrorism, which is climate change, Syrian mm -hmm. ground refugees, climate refugees, with what Shelley was saying, I know so many of the Guatemalans that have come to the United States because of the problems in Guatemala. In Guatemala. I know Salvadorans and all Central Americans and Mexicans because when I became a nurse from that part of the story, they knew my doctoral work was in Spanish language and literature and anthropology, and so nurse was kind of peripheral, which just happened to be the next vehicle for me. So I became the director of the interpreters at the large rural hospital of medicine. And so I met climate refugees who were under the guise of economic refugees from all of Central America, and the stories that they told me you know, like you feel your heart is heavy with what you've heard and seen. Well, I have seen the same thing. Uh, just one little tiny note on the Guatemalans. They were my favorites because they had so much Native American in them. They always looked at things with joy. But one of the sad stories from another Central American country was a father who talked about his 15-year-old daughter he said, yeah, I just really had to, we're speaking in Spanish all this time, I'm a remote interpreter while I'm at home as well, I'm internationally certified. But the father said to me, I'm so glad to get my daughter out of, let's say we sent out in El Salvador, because they were raping girls like that. So, 15 year olds. It's a huge amount of trauma. And crime, they're all over there, everywhere. Little ball, not respected. So what if you don't have a personal story like any of those? Really? I'm a sort of a scientist, academic, nerdy <laughs> type. I've always, I've always looked at the big picture. I've loved the big picture. My personal life is just fine. I think life is wonderful. And I don't see why we can't use this wonderful technology around us that's global on the internet and everything else that we've got going for really, the knowledge that we've got at this point, why everybody can't be happy on this planet. We are just going in so many bad directions, and the leading one right now is climate change. And it breaks my heart that we're, that we're not going in the directions we should be, but that's that's not a personal story. That's, um, well, that's, that's okay. my I mean, big that take is, on the thing, but I really feel it. Well, that's, that's, right that's your feelings, and that's your story. And I mean, I think that what you just said is, like, that's an amazing is that we have the resources and the technology to fix this and and that you know your story is that you you know that you've experienced that and you want to share that with we could you. all live like kings on this planet oh, yeah. on the average oh, yeah. but Mark, you have so many stories you have ridden bicycles because all over the world you have sacrificed yeah, your involved. elbow and shoulder to your <laughs> Yeah, but it's like the driving force for me is not the, is not the bicycle or, or specific things like that, or specific people or Guatemala or people I've met. It's more of a general kind of historic but this movement of cultures type thing, so but it's not as personal. But it represents exactly what George Marshall was talking about because you're doing it largely because it doesn't reduce climate emissions, but you're also getting this phenomenal reward yeah. from doing that. Yeah. Because you have ridden your bike in France and other places and have joy that is giving you and also your yeah. health and your strength because of what you have done. Mm -hmm. That is an incredible process. I just feel that about you. That's awesome. You've got to do something to the environment. And you've got to, you've got to think that that's, this is a good thing for me to ride my bike rather than ride my bike. You must be thinking that, right? But it gives me the reward to feel like Well, if you share that with people, then you can inspire them. You know, if I, if I keep hearing Irwin tell me over and over how great it is for me to exercise and stuff, I feel like, so that, you know, I'm getting closer to doing it. Do what makes you happy, and what makes you happy is what's healthy, and what's healthy is a healthy thing. You know what? I, I, 
One person who has never spoken to this meeting and by a small occasion is Chuck. And I'm wondering, Chuck, why you don't. I'm very concerned with overpopulation in relation to climate change. I've been in Sierra Club for a long, long, long time, international audience leader, organizer, stuff like that. Traveled all over the world. And uh, we never really talked about it much. And it is a root problem. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's very difficult to face, but it needs to be faced, mm -hmm. particularly if you go to foreign countries. Mm -hmm. That's it. And your, main, your main concern is overpopulation. Well, it's root. It's yeah. root. Mm -hmm. And we're not facing. Yes, providing everything else. Can we decide? We chose not to have kids for that. We well, those that. Three, There you go. When I think of climate change, I think of Planned Parenthood. Yeah. <laughs> no, we see that. We see the poverty, the, the disempowerment of women and women, and then all the you know, children being uh, just brutalized. And, and we, the reason, I think one of the reasons why we don't mention it as much is because there is a religious component to a lot of people's mm -hmm. feelings about this. I was raised yeah, 13 true. years in Catholic school, and you don't even think of not having children. And, you know, we, I have a relative that died because her priest kept demanding that she get pregnant. The first child had trouble breathing every day of his life, died at 18 months on Easter Sunday. And the priest said, God proof, you know, that you've got to do it again. And she did, and we lost her and her fetus. So I have a, a kind of a bitter, you know, look at that. But I think religion and politics and all of the, you know, the ideologies push into that. We have to have more people involved. And I, I, it's something that nobody wants to bring up, but I'm well, sure there is. Is there anybody working on this in this organization? Well, in, in this organization? No, we did discuss it. Not a CCL. We, 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 we keep uh, focused on one issue. Oh, yeah. Uh, the yes. CCL. Just, yeah, but, but if you have some sort of strength right now and people are listening, you little kids are with the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a very, very root of the problem. Yeah. You know, there are two different groups here today, and I'm not sure which one that you visit from time to time. Is it the Book Forum or CCL that you visit? Well, I've I come to this several times. So, uh, oh, good. <laughs> with me, Wednesday night, I'll be there. One of the things that the Book Forum is emphasizing is the fact that capitalism as it's practiced now, with infinite growth on a finite planet, is the wrong way to go after socialism is a possibility and refinements of the above. And in capitalism, you've got to have children. You've got to have more consumers. And so we understand that. So we are addressing the economic problem in the book form quite a bit. Would you like this book? This All right. Is uh, one of the successful things we did in the Sierra Club was train people in education and environmental Oh, sorry. How did get into what was that? Echo tourism. Echo tourism is part of the thing I was involved in, yeah. and we were relatively successful with that. And um, I'd like to see something that continue. I did in Newton County, we did a small like economic improvement program with echo tourism. It was only a small focus to bring people in to see the Buffalo River, to hike some of the trails that we had worked on. So we did echo tourism. Anyway, but that was a long time ago. And that's not the same type of ecotourism that, you, that you're talking about. You're talking about climate change ecotourism. Like and international stuff. We are going to have to close down here. There's a couple of things. Um, Molly has an announcement. Uh, the first before uh, she does that, um, well, one, I want to show you the number of breakouts that we had at the CCL conference. These, wow. all of these, and all of these, and we only had time each of us to attend maybe three or four. Mm -hmm. um, but we uh, tried to get as much information as we could. I got interesting. I got uh, 
um, information about farming, information about regulations versus carbon dividend, and of course narrative. Everybody had perspectives on health. There were so many different perspectives, climate change and the psyche, endless possibilities. I, and I hope some more of them can make us come with us next year. Actually, I'll keep talking some more about what they did with agriculture. Yeah. Uh, another thing is that the Citizens Climate Lobby has started sending out these little forms for constituent comments. And if you would fill one out, we are going to be collecting them and taking them personally to our members of Congress when they go to see them. Um, we also have letters of endorsement where you can go to a business and you say, well, if you support carbon fee and dividends, sign it this way. If you only support climate action, sign this letter. And these are endorsement letters that we are taking to our members of Congress. Whether you're a business or a faith group, um, it would be wonderful to collect those in there. And then Lolly has an announcement about uh, a book and also what we, what are we doing next year? Uh, this is a book that we reviewed last month that Gladys reviewed. It's our Outdoor Bits Principles of a Pluralistic Commonwealth. If anybody would want a copy, they sent these for free. They're trying to get this idea out to everybody. So if you'd like a copy, I need to keep a few because Gladys and I are talking about taking this to the Fayetteville City Council. But I have to read the whole thing. <laughs> but if you'd like it, Al Ferrovitz is well known for his left and center economic thoughts, etc. So that's all I needed to say. Uh, Chuck, if you don't want the book, I'll take it back and hand it on. But if you'd like to keep it on the light, you have, they were free. I just had to hear from uh, Thank you. And what were we going to be doing next time? Let's see. I think Dick in October is going to get the back of Williams. Oh, September. Oh, I'm going to do September. I'm going to do the uninhabitable planet, uninhabitable planet that was a news article in the New York Magazine and was followed up by Richard Heinberg, an energy expert that we, the Climate Change Forum, are doing. We have done a lot of work with him, and he said his article was entitled "Are We Doomed?" And then there was yet another one on either Common Dreams or Echo Watch. I'll have to look for it. Where a psychologist was responding to Michael Mann, who said the uninhabitable planet perhaps was too alarmist. And for Michael Mann, who is a favorite of mine, just like yeah, James yeah. Hansen, to say maybe we're being alarmist uh, was a little disappointing. I still regard Michael Mann as knowing everything, just like James Hansen. But that psychologist said we should be alarmed. It is of such a serious nature that we should be alarmed. So those, I wonder if I can find that article, I'll bring it to you, but for sure it's on those two articles. All We Do by Richard Heinberg, who's responding to the uninhabitable planet by, in the New York Magazine. And I can send those links out to the list. They're just on the Okay. They're short. Okay. Okay. So one other point to that, I think, I haven't listened to it. I think that on the Citizens Climate Radio, they actually, one of their segments was on this topic about like, is that appropriate to talk about climate change to people in those terms and, and kind of um, address this kind of both sides of what you're talking about? I haven't heard it, but it might be a resource you might want to check out. Good, thanks. I appreciate that. Let me make a big note. And then this, with regard to the forms, if you guys want to fill them out here today, we will collect them and we can add them to our pile. I have a couple of good hands to pass around. Um, here you go. And then after you fill them out, if you feel that you are going to be in a situation where you're going to be engaging an audience, Anywhere that you go that you might want to have them fill out the form, you can take an extra one, make photocopies, and then uh, you guys can also be ambassadors of the constituent planet. Um, if you're so inclined, uh, the inconvenient sequels from the same place in our town to see what we can do. It's supposed to be coming out hey, from this Friday. It's out. Yeah. It's out. Yeah. The the they were shot last time.
I felt like Chris was ready, not fight, but he was, you know, uh, a booty very social and, you know, uh, but, oh, no, I know you. But I had a feeling that there was an edge under him, under there. But you guys just kept your cool because I just wanted to say, if you could see what happened to my parents' restaurant in Sandy, you would not believe any of the crap you would. I, and I kept it really, I, I, I sat on my hands, I bit my lip, and I let you guys see me, and I was very proud of you because I saw the worst that a change in storms and everything. I saw the worst in it. They are, they're grouped. There has been, a, there has been a movement. They are concerned. They are interested in, in um, renewable energies. They've been saying this for years. They accept that climate change is real. They are concerned that there still will be a role for fossil fuels. I mean, they're still being paid off by the fossil fuel industry. Um, but that, they are feeling the pressure. They're definitely mm -hmm. feeling the pressure. Well, we can't continue to extract. We have a finite planet. We, in the oil business, we actually said we peaked. Peaked in the 70s. We didn't find anything new. So we had to work with new technologies to extract some <coughs> fracking. Well, we were fracking then anyway, but just, uh, we were scared because you're, you don't know money, it's not your money in the bank. It's the research in the ground. You could borrow. One of the things that we want to do is have at least quarterly meetings with all of our representatives. So before the end of the year, end of the year, we'll have another meeting with Walmart, and hopefully we'll have 50 people show up. Oh, wow. we filled the room. Yeah, we had it. Every chair was full. No, it will be in today. And they invited us back. They yeah, we yeah. had a very yeah. cordial relationship. They said, yes, come, we, we like your information, and they save our information, and we keep coming back. You know, one thing I'm, I'm sorry Robert didn't bring that I forgot to mention is Robert put together a packet. You want to tell them what was in that packet? Well, what we had done for each member of Congress that we went to see in D.C. was a packet. It was a cover, and it said uh, the case for carbon pricing. And so we had a cover letter, and we had all 18 people that attended sign this letter to each individual representative. Then on the next page, we had the business case for carbon fee and dividend in Arkansas. And so what we had done, we had started a group looking at, in Arkansas, what companies support climate action. So we did a quick survey with a half dozen people in Ar a Fayetteville and Blue Rock. And so we found companies in Arkansas, big companies, Walmart, Tyson's, all have climate action plans. Mm -hmm. So we listed that. Then we had that publication, uh, the carbon, the conservative case uh, for carbon mm -hmm. feeding and mm -hmm. for carbon mm -hmm. dividends from, you know, James Baker and yeah. whatever. So we put that eight pages in there. Then we had the latest Yale University poll showing that 64% of people in Arkansas wanted some action on climate change, and then they had it broke down by district, and also 60-something percent of Trump voters, you know. So we had that, and then we had two documents. We had the uh, climate resolution, which is brought forth in this session, calling for some action, and then a list of the Congressional House of Representatives Bipartisan Commission uh, climate, solutions. Climate, climate Solutions Caucus. And so when we did this, there were 44 members, 22 Republicans, 22 Democrats. And it has to come in two to two. Last week, it's going up to 52. Well, they want to stop there, is what I'm saying. And this was a 
first time I had ever been into a lot of things, so it was pretty exciting because it was not just going to work. Capital and I never been to because there's a lot of stuff on top. But I will say that my favorite part about leaving the Walmart meeting and Matthew was with me in the meeting is that, um, one, they were really impressed and Robert was there too. They were impressed. He was impressed by the packet. And yeah. I was telling Shalai that my favorite comment when we left is that, I forget who, who said it, that I don't think they could tell if we were Republicans or Democrats. <laughs> manager and the risk manager and a whole bunch of other you know people that did this we were all together on the same page we had risk management disaster recovery and it wasn't just because we were in Houston and you know exploring we talked to shit down and so risk and insurance companies I mean yeah. you're the biggest well they know it's you and didn't write the biggest one in the world knows, and yes. so they're worried just like the Pentagon. That's right, yeah. they are worried. And, and that's, that, you know, the reason it takes a reach. Right. And that, those are the things we kind of look at if we couldn't get a lot of time. Huh. So the insurance company, how do you feel about it? Go on a regular insurance company, how do you feel about it? And risk management is a big issue. We're kind of going around here, can I ask a couple of academic questions about CCL? Uh, what about reducing carbon? Uh, what about taking carbon out of the atmosphere? If you're going to get to 350, you got to take it out. I guess um, see uh, part of the plan would be that the price on carbon gets paid to people who take X tons of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, right? Is that what I'm not sure how that works. I mean, you do it except by planting trees, though. I don't think they've got well, a trees. There should be a feasible way to do it. Given for purposely planting trees for this purpose. It's yeah. no tillage. It's non-tillage and no more glyphosate, for example. It's no more much. Uh -huh. 